up everybody welcome to the train your slut podcast this is dom king i appreciate you being with me here today let's get it going right i wanted to talk to you guys something just popped in my head right when i sat here i want to give you all some warnings about uh the different characters that you're going to find in the adult lifestyle environment okay there's um there's kind of there's different characters that you're gonna run across right um and if you're newer to this i want you guys to beware okay so let's go with the uh first of all you're gonna have the you're gonna have the predatory couple okay the predatory couple is the one who they show up to the building and uh, basically they're predators, right? They're on the prey. They're looking for someone to turn out and fuck. Um, they're not really there for sexual freedom or liberation. They're they're there to pick up some some ass, right? Or they're there to to you know they're more about the meat in the game. Right, um, they have no standards. That's a big red flag. They'll take anybody home with them that will come with them. And that's basically it. That's the predatory couple, right? Always in a lot of different people's face. You know, uh, they're playing the numbers game, so they're pretty much flirting with everybody in the room until someone says yes, basically, right? Um, we, I think we've all known a guy who, who plays that game. You know, at the club, he'll ask 100 bitches, and then finally the 99th bitch will, will go home with him. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, that's one type of character, right? Then, then, you, got the, then you got the couple who, uh, as, soon as, they, as soon as they're in the environment, they split up. And then they're out on their own type of co couple. So that's another couple you'll find. Okay. The, the split up couple. You know, I imagine them like walking in. They give each other a dap and a deuces and then they fucking float off, you know, to go find different people to fuck. Right. Now, I think, um, you know, when I mentioned these first two type of couples, I think uh, I am mentioning them on a troublesome, in a troublesome type of way, right? Like, these are usually never the type of people that you probably uh, want to get involved with, especially if you're new. Now, if you're in the environment and you're one of these same people or you're, there's a mutual, by all means, okay? Again, whatever floats your boat, I'm just calling it how it is and the shit that I've seen. Okay, so the split up couple, right? Now, here's another thing with the split up couple, right? The split up couple, they might be doing things too fast. They might not be going by the train your slut protocol and the rules that I tell you guys to go a little bit slower in your sexual adventures. So be careful, especially if you're a man. And you're fucking with one of these women who's part of a split up couple, because then homeboy might not be getting him no play when a split up, and he might be coming back looking for his wife, and she might be sucking your dick, and he might not be happy about that when he sees it, because they're going too fast, and they're maybe not even as ready. He might be not, he not might not be fucking ready for that shit. So there's trouble in playing. I mean, that goes both ways too, you know. Homeboy could be knocking something out in the corner and homegirl come around the corner. She might not be prepared to see her man that she just split up with fucking somebody yet because they're moving too fast. So be fucking careful. The split up couple also kind of dangerous. Um, 
the not at the Grey House, but at other establishments, you'll find the dick in the hand guy. Dick in the hand guy is a real thing. He'll usually be in a corner, a corner seat, or making his way to have a good angle uh, near any action. Attractive woman, right? So historically, when I've taken my wife into these environments, Dick in the Hand guy shows up. And uh, for a while, maybe, maybe at one point he won't be Dick in the Hand guy. He'll just be guy, follower, creep guy, right? And then all of a sudden you'll turn around and be like, oh, shit, this motherfucker's got his dick in his hand, right? And then that's when you start questioning what you're doing and where you're at. <laughs> why the fuck am I here fucking with this bunky ass shit? Which is why you need to come to our... We, we don't allow dick in the hand guy in our building, just so you know. So if you're coming to our event to be dick in the hand guy, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. That's not going to happen, okay? Not that you can't be one of our clients and have your dick in your hand, but there's ways to do that shit. So don't follow people around and whip out your dick without asking any kind of permission or it being appropriate in the situation context is everything okay um turn up party girl usually usually the first one naked there's always the first one naked and not topless naked and I'm talking not even shoes. <laughs> These happen, right? Some environments, she's 25. In other environments, she's 75. Yes, I've bear witness to it. If you think that I haven't been to war for you guys, you're mistaken. I have, right? I have mental bullet wounds. I have pictures in my head that I can't erase. That's why you should listen to me in the Train Your Slut podcast. Because when you've seen a 75-year-old woman's brown eye staring you right in your face, it's, it's a fucking mental picture I'll never be able to forget for the rest of my life. Seriously. You know? And these are the things that like, you know, it got it gets to a point where, you know, me and Brooklyn will be out there we're like we'd be straight doing fucking research. Right? We're fucking people watchers. We like to see how people move. <clears throat> right? So we've been to horrible environments and we go back. Because one, I mean, that's how we find our okay, let me go to the next couple then, right? The next couple is the couple that doesn't belong there which would usually be us. And then what's cool is we would find other couples that, you know, you might find one other and you know that they're just like you and you know that they don't belong there. And those are the people that we would usually make conversations with and show them the way. Let them know that there's somewhere safer to be Somewhere more clean, you know, somewhere where the average age is not 75. Um, so, yeah, you know, people go, people take a lot of stabs at these environments. You, you go, you know, you go to all these different environments hoping for something to happen. And it just don't, you know, it just don't. Be prepared for a lot of disappointments if you're trying to have sexual adventures. Shit never goes the way it's probably planned. I think I touched on that before. But it's true. You're going to have a lot of strikeouts. Babe Ruth. You know, you everyone knows Babe Ruth for home runs, right? Well, that motherfucker missed the ball all the goddamn time. Same goes. 
even if you're babe fucking Ruth of sex, you're, you're going to have strikeouts. You're going to go have nights um, that don't work out the way you want them to. Right? Okay. Now another character you're always going to have in the room. Usually a worker girl, right? Usually the best looking one in the room most of the time. Unless me and Brooklyn are there. She's usually the best looking one in the room. And I'm not just saying that. I, I'm, I'm literally saying that because some of these environments are fucking, <laughs> you know, horrific. Um... But usually if you go, like, so if you go to one of these environments, right, where there's a less attractive crowd, let's say, I'm trying to be nice. Let's say you go to one of these ones, the less attractive crowd, right? And then you got like a 25 year old with perky titties and she's fucking topless and, and she's with some fucking old ass motherfucker. Yeah, she working. I promise. Don't even go there. Right. All these different little characters looming, right? So if you're here's the thing, another thing for you guys to know too, is that if you're new there, a lot of these establishments, man, nobody else is new there. So you're the fresh motherfucking meat. Beware. So you're gonna get hit by the predator couple. You're going to get followed by dick in the hand, man. Right? You know? Party girl going to pop it open right in front of you. You're going to get the whole experience. You know what I'm saying? So what Grey House Society is about is about eliminating all of that and creating a space for all of those couples or people that didn't belong in this raunchy ass environment. That's what we came to do. We walk them in, we show them the way. And this, this is just a part of that. This is me being a friendly neighbor, giving y'all a heads up about how to conduct yourself, what to expect, and how to avoid the pitfalls that come associated with this. There's pitfalls in this shit, yo. Don't play with it. Take it seriously. No matter how it, no matter how you flex it, whether you single or in a relationship, you know, when you when you start fucking with sexuality and other people's bodies or even your own body, be meticulous. Take your time. Be organic. Don't be predatory. There's a difference. You know, it's okay to go to a club or a place or an environment looking for someone to play with. That's totally okay. That's not predatory. I think the part that makes it more predatory is the fact that they'll pretty much take anybody that they could get. You know what I mean? They'll take anybody they could get. So they're not there for, they're just there to do some shit. That shit don't, you know, I don't know. That shit don't sit right with me. I can sniff out. I can sniff that shit out, yo. Authenticity is what you should be chasing. Organic chemistry is what you should be looking for. If you go out one night, don't force it. If you're trying to go play, limit your expectations. 
limit your expectations so there's no disappointments. That's one of the biggest pieces of advice I, I could give you in this. Try to limit your expectations. I remember <laughs> one of a really spicy night me and Brooklyn had one night, right? Was we went out and we were going to, you know, do some of our little spicy shit that we do. Some of the stuff I elaborated on last time, right? <clears throat> and we just had a horrible night. Nothing went right. Dinner didn't go right. Uh, the the playtime didn't go right. And we were both kind of mad. And we was, you know, we, we didn't really get to have any type of sex or anything that night. And we're parents, and we don't get to get out often, as often, you know, as we would, we would hope to, you know, at that time. Um, our children were younger. Our my children were still young, but they were baby babies at the time, so we didn't really get to get out as much. And uh, so, you know, this <laughs> at the time, I don't know why she was telling me this, but my at the time, my wife was telling me that she had a little fantasy for me to fuck her with a condom on because I hadn't done that since we were, like, teenagers, right? Since, like, when we first met. Because, like, we first met, I used to fuck her with condoms for a while, and then, like, once, like, there was a time where I just... You know, once I knew that we were together forever, I just barebacked it, and that's just how it's been ever since. So she was telling me it would be set. You know, she kept telling me for like a week or two or whatever it would be sexy if I fucked with a condom on. I'm like, I don't fuck condoms. I don't fucking wanna. That shit. Fuck. You know, who wants to fuck with a condom on, right? But she was just telling me how much she had wanted that, and that was over the the few weeks before us going out. Not that she had expectations of me doing that. That was just part of the story, right? So, anyway, we're driving home. We're basically home. We're home. We're about to pull up and go in, right? And we lived in these apartments that had interior corridors, like a New York-style apartment, and it had, like, uh, a parking garage, like a multi multiple-level parking garage. And uh, I drove her to the top. And then let me back up. I actually stopped at the store. I bought a pack of condoms right across the street. Then I drove to the top. She didn't know I bought the condoms. I just got a drink, some waters. I got some condoms. I drove her to the top of the fucking parking structure. I pushed her fucking seat back. I put on a condom. I fucked the shit out of her. And I, shit, I, it was good too. I finished and everything. It was a blast. She loved it. And that's basically, that happened off of a night where we had a high expectation, we got disappointed, and then I kind of just thought on the fly and made something spicy happen. And now it's a nice little memory that we have from that, right? But, you know, limiting that expectation is huge. Because if you go out with a high expectation, you might end up falling in a trap with one of those people I was just, just you know, describing. Now, I didn't give you all the characters yet, and I thought that'd be lame if I just went through it. I probably got about five more I could, uh, you know, elaborate on. But those are the first few. Maybe I'll touch back on that another time. Some more characters will give them. Some, we'll do that again. Um... But you could fall in a trap, right? You might be too desperate to find that person to play with, and then you might, because you find some willing motherfucker, you find some couple who's just willing to take anybody they can get, and then that happens to be you. Well, now you're making a misstep, and you're you're mate, you're doing something that's, you know, that you could have one of those regrets on. So be aware. Let it come naturally. Again, this comes from my own shit, yo. Plenty of nights of, of, of misfortune. The blessings that we give you, you know, my beautiful clients out there, if you're listening, you guys are blessed, yo, for real. 
because we do shit right. All the little things, all the little spoils, that's the stuff that we, that's the stuff that we thrive in. It's the things that we wish we had people providing for us when we were first experimenting with things. You know? Someone to, you know, I'm, I'm that friend for you and say, hey, listen, watch out for these motherfuckers because they're going to come at you this way. You know? Think about that shit. I'm here to help people. Dom King wants to help. You know? <clears throat> Make sure you out there taking care of your woman. In all ways. You know? The Dom sub thing. You know, it's... It's more, you know, there's little layers to how we do this. There's little layers that you need to pay attention to when it comes to allowing your woman to go there. I was, okay, here's something, right? I was put on to, I watched a little video about uh, a man. I saw these, this video on the internet of a man and a woman. And she was in the, it was a, what is it, what do they call it? A domestic, domestic punishment or some shit they was into. And this dude... He would have, so basically, it was like a dominant, submissive relationship that they claimed that they had. And any time that she was out of line with him in any type of way, whether it be like attitude or this, like all, they had all these different little rules and shit. And then she had all these different consequences, like, like write, like writing shit. Like, you know how when you get in, when you got in trouble in school and they make you write like a bunch of lines or like write like a paper or some shit? Like, he had this woman like writing shit, like writing out like long form, like fucking, I don't know what the fuck it was. Um, and then they were talking about like uh, spankings and shit like that. Um, and this dude, he just thought he was the machoist motherfucker. He thought he was so in control. But here's where they exposed themselves. This whole shit was her idea. What? Nah, son. I'm sorry, yo. That shit was goofy to me. It was goofy. Like... This shit was her idea. It was her. It was her fetish. She, you know, I guess whatever, yo, whatever floats your boat. But that's not what dominance looks like to me. Dominance means having supreme influence. You know, at least in this context. Right? But the key is, is for your influence to have supreme intention. If your intentions are not authentic, I mean, now you're just fucking playing with people. You're playing with things you probably shouldn't be playing with. You know, I think, you know, anybody who takes this shit as seriously as me, it's offensive when people perpetrate it to be that. It's not dominance over women. We're actually the ones serving them. It's, 
I said it before, it's protection. My wife can do what she wants because she's fucking safe. I'm not the one she has to answer to. I'm the reason that she has to answer to nobody. All she gives a fuck about is what I think. So if I tell her she's good, she's good. But am I treating her like a fucking child, making her write shit out? She disobeys me? That shit is fucking corny, B. You're not dominant. You're role-playing with your bitch. And she's dominating you because she's convinced you that this shit is the way. And now you feel powerful because she acts like a servant to you. You're not empowering your woman at all, man. You're a bloodsucker and a leech. Being a dom, being dominant is giving. That's all we do is give. I give her the opportunity to not be judged. Meanwhile, the fake motherfuckers, they portray this shit as that they are the judge. They're judging her on everything. This motherfucker's judging everything this woman does. Oh, how did you conduct yourself here? How did you act here? How did you do this? How did you do that? This was out of line. Did you do this? Did you do that? Man. Robotic ass motherfucking bitch. I wish I would. The power, fellas, the power in your woman is when she's able to connect with a real fucking self. Whatever that may be. Right? That doesn't always have to be a sex... It doesn't always have to be in a sexual thing, a sexual being, right? Everybody's sexuality is different. I'm not preaching my gospel on this motherfucking show. This isn't for me to preach my way of life. But I will call a motherfucker out. Right? If you faking the motherfucking funk, you know, if you're, you know, disrespecting, you know, your woman, like that shit needs to be said. We're more, you know, like I said, you know, like, I don't like the term feminist because all of the things that get attached to it. But I'm very much have feminist beliefs. I, mean, I don't even, I, again, I don't like the term feminist. A, a lot of weird shit gets attached to that, right? But man, the power of your woman is a special motherfucking thing. And when you abuse that shit, yeah, yo, that's when you start really playing with fucking fire. We need to rectify that shit. Again, there's a lot of layers to this shit. You don't have to be like me. But 
the truth should be clear and evident. Your woman, the more you give your woman the freedom to express herself the way that she feels, the more you take away the power of anybody that could ever fucking come between you. Outside beings can't come for us, me and mine. You know what I mean? Because we expect it already. We know what time it is. Trying to deliver the message to you. Be careful. Be careful who you let dominate you, ladies. This isn't about service. You're not in service to us. That's a use. That's somebody using you. Right? Submission is honor that goes both ways. I'm honored. I'm honored at the submission of my woman. I'm honored to protect her and lay my life on the line for her. You so dominant, you ready to die for your woman, homie? Better motherfucker like that, first one to run, leave his woman all behind in a high intense situation. He need to keep his little funky dominant ass alive, right? Shit, bet me. You know, real motherfuckers put their lady on a pedestal. Why? Because we know we're dominant. We don't have to flex that on her. It's already understood. You know, that's the real shit. We're dominant, so we protect. Why would we let her have to protect herself? My woman can be free because I know she ain't going to get hurt. You know, that's a, and that's a whole nother level, maybe a whole nother show, right? Like you got ladies, you know, you know, like if you got ladies out here who are single and unprotected and they move in in sexual ways, which I, be, I believe you have the right to. But I promise you what you're doing is more dangerous you're more dangerous. When you're being sexually free and you're single like that, it's more dangerous because you're opening yourself up to all types of predatory behavior. You don't have a circle of protection. You don't have anybody dominant there to protect you. Like me and my wife can go, like see me and my wife, we can be the split up couple but we're not really splitting up to go fucking get some meat. We can be the split up couple and I know I trust her to not do anything outside the realm or context of our rules and boundaries. Feel me? That's what this shit's about. She's protected. She's safe. Imagine being a woman in one of these environments and dick and a hand man is there and you don't have no man. See, when I go in that environment and I got my wife and dick and a hand man is there, he know better. I, man, check this out. So one time we're at this environment. Okay. And my wife is sitting down, or sitting down, and my wife is topless. She's, she's, 
showing this girl that's across this girl that we were sitting with. She was across from us. My wife's topless, and she's showing, you know, showing her titties to her. And this old dude comes out of nowhere. Hug, and my wife is sitting down. Brooklyn's sitting down. This dude comes up behind and just from behind, like, hugs her and grabs both of her titties, just boom, right on top. Man, let me tell you how quick I came up out my seat and had my hands right in this dude's chest. It was fast. I was up on him. Right? You can't just be doing that shit. Right? Now, imagine... Imagine if I wasn't there. I mean, I'm sure there was security there. It would have taken probably a while. But nevertheless, so you need to be careful out there with who you're fucking with. You need to be careful out there if you're being sexually free as a single person. Okay? Um, because you're fucking with powers. You're fucking with power. You're fucking with dangerous energy, right? So if you meet a guy and he's telling you he's a dom, and he's a dominant, make him show and prove that shit by the way he nurtures and protects your spirit. You feel me? Insecure motherfuckers, they're the ones that have all the rules. All the regulations. You want to know how I know? Because once upon a time, I was that motherfucker too. It's natural. It's kind of a natural reaction for a man. But grown-ups grow out of that shit. Feel me? That shit's important. Dominant energy. Dominant energy knows his dominant energy. So it doesn't need to be said. You don't need to throw that in your woman's face every day with with uh, punishments and stupid shit like that, right? It's an understanding. Got to be on the same page. My woman is my best knower. She's my right hand. She's my six o'clock. See, see what I'm saying? That's how it should be. Be careful, y'all. Dom King, Train Your Slut Podcast. It's been a pleasure fucking with y'all today. Till next time. Peace.